Welcome back. Today I want to uh, talk about how to estimate a, a confirmatory factor analysis using Starter. In the example we will use, we look into um, a measure of financial inclusion where we focus on the ease of use. The ease of use cannot be observed directly. However, we have answers from a questionnaire that can be related to this latent variable. So our model looks a bit like this one here, where we have different measures in the rectangular boxes that we observe. We assume there is an idiosyncratic error term for each and every case, and there is the latent variable that influences the answers to all these questions. Finally, we permit that the error terms are potentially correlated. The starting point is a theoretical understanding of what I try to measure. So it's common to group questions for each and every latent variable. We um, estimate um, the model and then we check for model fit. And there are different um, goodness of fit measures that are common. One is the so-called risk test, the root mean squared error of approximation. So that's quite a mouthful. It took me several retakes. The RMSEA and the comparative fit index or CFI. These different measures um, are monitored after each and every round of your estimation. As a, as a widely accepted cutoff point, um, the um, RMSEA should be below 0.05 and the CMFI should be above 0.95. And you should have an in insignificant um, chi-square test statistic. Now the main improvement is to permit correlations between error terms. So in order to know which of these many correlations is the most interesting one to explore, we run so-called modification indices. And again, I provide a reference to that. And, and these modification indices rank um, the correlations that are most promising in enhancing model fit. So what in the end do we get out of it? Well, we will obtain um, these um, standardized coefficients. We would understand what is the contribution of these different um, measures to our latent variable. That could be quite useful to understand um, this particular latent variable. Now, um, the important thing to note is there is a lot more to um, measurement models and of course to the, the broader category of structural equation modeling that can be explored. So if you want to explore something further, please leave some comments below. I'm more than happy to do a few more videos or maybe a live stream on structural equation modeling. Good, let's jump into Starter and have some fun. So I moved over to Starter and again, um, all the, the codes and the data sets are available on GitHub. The link um, can be found um, on the channel pages. So I just now changed my directory to my target directory. I keep the data and then I um, use the financial inclusion data. So let me just open that up. So here we are. Um, if you don't know um, anything about the data, the best thing to do is um, have a little describe um, and see whether labels have been specified. And in this case, we have labels specified. So there are quite a few um, measures. They're all linked to um, using financial products. So um, it's it's about um, um, you know the quality of financial products. So how long does it take, for instance, to process um, a loan application? Um, so lots of these measures that tell you something about the quality um, of um, a financial product. Now I will focus on one particular aspect and that is the ease of use and I follow the literature here. Again, if you want to know more about this literature, um, I um, provide a link um, down below to a paper um, we wrote about financial inclusion. So it goes much deeper into why this is the way of, of measuring it. So um, I use SEM, so that's um, the um, keyword for structural equation models. And then to specify the equations and to separate the equations, I use these um, brackets. So that would basically um, indicate one equation. And again, when you think about the picture, 
um, the latent variable is uh, the source of variance for these different measures. So we um, look at a direction of influence from the latent variable to these different measures. Now in the structural equation model syntax, uh, latent variables tend to be all um, in, um, in capital letters. So that's a convention. Um, we refer here to ease, so that this is ease of use and then we put the arrow. So that is simply a minus and, and then larger than. So that would basically indicate our error. So ease of use would be our latent variable. So is it easy to use financial products? And then we have a, a, a whole host of measures. Okay, so that is it. Um, I could do somewhere here a, a line break is, that is sometimes useful and I specify now here the comma which is the options and here I specify the method. Um, we specify the latent variable then we standardize. So what you of course notice is that um, this is a numeric method. Yeah? So you have various iterations. We have seen this before when we talked about logistic models. It might not actually converge. Um, we don't have that many observations here. So this is something to note. We only have 65. We have quite a few coefficients for that to estimate because all of these things here are coefficients. Here you see the contribution of these various questions. And you can also observe whether they are significant or not. So that's already a first um, um, interesting test whether the way of your measurement um, is actually relating to the latent variable you want to quantify. And then you have the different variances displayed as well. Um, and you see here the standardization. Good. And now the next thing we do is we look into these goodness of fit measures. So let me just do this. So STAT. So this is a post estimation command. GOF for goodness of fit. And I want to have statistics and um, the I specify all. So the RMSEA measure, we want this to be below 0.05. So here we are definitely above. Um, then we look at this CFI, so this measure here, and that should be supposed to be above um, um, 0.95. And again, this doesn't look very promising. The, the first impression looking at this would be the model isn't very good. So that's basically these modification indices. Yeah, let me just run this. But look at the MI. It runs through um, all the different um, yeah, correlations or covariances and it would show you the um, modification index value. You would look at the largest one and you would consider um, incorporating that. We um, simply run this one more time. So just copy paste that and now we and we add these um, these additional correlations um, to the model. And, and then it might be the easiest simply to copy paste the names. Yeah. So because these are then the error terms and simply copy paste that and I would replace here the comma with the asterisk. And then we run again our goodness of fit um, tests. Well, it's still not amazing, but it's, it's moving a little bit more into the right direction. It's, so we add another covariance now um, and we continue this process until we, we find a specification that is useful. But you see sometimes you end up in a situation like here where it might not converge. Yeah, so that that is a possibility. So in this case, the only thing you can do is you can stop that um, and change the specification. We are very quickly limited um, by um, our sample size. Um, I see you in the next one.